Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Strauss. I'm a chiropractor specializing in the conservative treatment of scoliosis. I've been in practice for 40 years, and we're based right outside New York City. I want to talk to you about dextroscoliosis, specifically dextroscoliosis in the lumbar or lower back. The word dextro means right, so it means that the curve is going to the right. Here's a slide of the middle back, and we can see that in that situation, dextro, or right-sided scoliosis, is what we would typically see. The body does not want the scoliosis to go into the left side of the body because the heart is there. So almost all scoliosis in a child is going to go to the right in the upper back and to the left, or levo, in the lower back. Levoscoliosis in the lower back means that the curve goes to the left. And you can see here a slide of a levoscoliosis. If we have the opposite configuration, in other words, if we have levo in the upper or left-sided scoliosis in the upper and dextroscoliosis of the lumbar, that could indicate that there's an underlying neurological problem. Essentially, we're looking for three different things. Three, we have three different suspects for that neurological problem. Those three things include a Chiari type one, and Chiari is where the brain stem extends down into the spinal cord. You can see here an image of the brain, and the bottom of the brain, called the brain stem, should not extend below the base of the skull. There's a hole at the base of the skull called the foramen magnum. That's Latin for big hole. And we do not want the brain stem to extend below that. So in an MRI image, with the radiologist will be able to determine whether that's the case, and he'll mark how many millimeters below the frame and magnum the brainstem extends. That's the first thing that we're looking for if we have dextroscoliosis lumbar. The symptoms associated with the Chiari type 1 are going to be things like the person will lose their abdominal reflex, they're going to come in with headaches, they're going to come in with numbness in their hands, they're going to come in with a lot of stiffness, and, and possibly even muscular weakness. So we might even see this in the way the person is walking. If we have these sort of a things showing up that are associated with the dextroscoliosis lumbar, we're gonna send that person for an MRI. The second thing that we're looking for in dextroscoliosis lumbar would be what's called a syrinx. A syrinx is a fluid-filled sac in the spinal cord. The syrinx is often associated also with the Chiari, and the syrinx is also going to have symptoms of muscle weakness, numbness, similar kind of symptoms that we would see with the Chiari. It also will show up on the MRI, and we can see here an MRI image of the Chiari formation. The third thing that we're going to see, possibly, is tethering of the cord. Tethering of the cord indicates that, there are, that the fibers of the nerve are stuck to the bones of the spine, so as the child is growing in height, because these nerves are adhered to the bones, it's going to pull the spine into the scoliosis. And again, we're going to see some symptoms like loss of the abdominal reflex. We're going to see weakness in the legs, sometimes pain in the back. Now, interestingly, dextroscoliosis lumbar in the adult with de novo or degenerative scoliosis, remember, this is the type of scoliosis that only begins to show up at around 40 to 50 years of age, they could just as commonly have a dextroscoliosis lumbar as a levoscoliosis lumbar. In other words, there is no predisposition that it should go one way or the other in the de novo scoliosis because it's oftentimes only located in the lower back. There's nothing happening in the upper back, and so the body doesn't care about right or left because there's no possibility of it intruding into the heart. So when we have a dextroscoliosis lumbar in an adult, that's very common doesn't indicate necessarily any other issues are going to be present.